Candace, these things eventually hit a wall. How do you think this would have ended? Well, Tony, I took Tony uh, to the FBI office to interview him. And uh, at first, I, you know, because he was so resistant and, and I, I had interviewed a lot of troubled kids. I used to be a psychiatric nurse. And, and so I said, it seems like you're afraid of me. And he said, yeah, yeah. And he said, Michael told me if the police or FBI ever got us, that I shouldn't say anything, that you would hurt us. And Tony looked like my son looked when, he was, when my son was the same age. And I said, I have a son. I have a little boy. Do I seem like the kind of person that would hurt you? And he looked at me and went, no, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But he began to open up. Um, and the plan that Michael had was they were going to San Diego. It's only 10 miles from the, Me the border in Mexico. And they were going to go into a Mexico. He was going to buy a little girl to be Tony's friend because Tony did not like being with Michael that way. And um, after that, the plan was to go to the Netherlands. And that is a terrifying <clears throat> thing because oftentimes when children, young children are trafficked to a foreign country and Tony used the term sex slave, that's exactly what he was and what the little girl would have been. And then um, <clears throat> sadly, a lot of times when, once they're out of the country, they're never seen again. Now he had a duffel bag with him. He did. And what was in that duffel he did. bag? And um, he was, the bag was on the floor between us. And um, he was explaining to me that Michael really was a good guy. And that uh, I said, well, what makes you think that? And he goes, well, he's, he's good. He buys me things. He buys me uh, CDs music CDs. And um, he reached in the duffel bag and pulled out a CD and said, see, he's, this is what he buys me. And I glanced in the duffel bag and I saw what looked like a VHS tape, which immediately told me Michael was probably filming <clears throat> their activity. And I took them out and t I said, what is this? And Tony said, well, I, said, I don't want to talk about that. I'm embarrassed. Of course, I knew what it was. And then something glimmered or flickered in the light. And I, and I said, what is that? And it was a crack pipe. And I said, how often have you been smoking uh, crack? And I knew that offenders frequently give their victim some drug to make them high for obvious reasons, to make them more easy to control. And he said, several times a day, several times a day. Um, and then when. I took Tony to the hospital to be checked out. We were in a room and he was, we were waiting for the doctor to come in. He was so fatigued because with crack, you don't sleep normally. Mm -hmm. He was so fatigued just sitting in a chair. He fell asleep sitting up. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we did was get his weight and he had lost 10 pounds in 10 days. So mm -hmm. he'd gone from 84 pounds to 74 pounds, which mm -hmm. is highly dangerous for a young child. Yeah, at that, at, at that age, the, yeah. you get dehydrated really, really fast. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Now, you eventually reunited him with his mother. I was flying Tony back to Oregon from San Francisco, and uh, we landed. While we were in, in the air, um, I had my arm around him, and he once again fell asleep, and we landed, and I said, we're here, we're here. You know, your family's waiting for you. And we were going, uh, after we got off the plane, down a ramp. And I looked and I said, is that them? Is that your, your, your folks? And he looked and he said, yes. And he broke away from me and, and started running toward them. And then he stopped suddenly. And it's said the most amazing thing I'd heard in 20 years on the job. He turned and said, I almost forgot. Thank you for saving me. Agent Candy. Do you have a story or a question for me? Click the link in the description and tell me what in the world is going on.